coping with traumatic events, coping with PTSD. In today's video, I would like to teach you about how our psyche deals with traumatic events in our life. This includes our childhood trauma, emotional trauma, PTSD, and any other traumatic event that we might experience in adulthood. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Here I post free videos about self-esteem, money, relationships, as well as free self-development webinars like this one and free guided healing meditations. All the links to all my webinars and guided meditations you can find in the description of this video. Please subscribe, please give me thumbs up and click the notification bell so you won't miss any of my future videos. Let's get back to our today's topic, coping with traumatic events in our life. In the book, The Body Keeps the Score, written by American psychiatrist Bessel van der Kolk, the author talks about three ways that our psyche deals with trauma. Let's talk about these three ways of dealing with trauma and I will share with you some examples from the book and some examples from my private practice. We are most effective in dealing with trauma when we use what is called our emotional brain. It can be emotional support from a family member. It can be emotional support from a good friend. It can be emotional support from mentor or therapist. Examples. Uh, a woman goes through a betrayal and painful divorce with her husband. A friend who went through a similar experience can relate to her feelings and listen to her. A family member can provide an emotional support. A therapist can help her to deal with the pain and guide her through the healing process. Another example uh, of a traumatic event is a child who was uh, physically or sexually abused in school. If this child has a close trusting relationship with their parents, they can talk about what happened and also seek a professional help. This way the child can recover from this trauma in a reasonable short period of time. A third example is the PTSD experienced by war veterans. It has been proven that group therapy can be highly effective because other group members have gone through similar experience and can fully understand each other's pain. A therapist can also guide the group and make sure that all feelings are being verbalized and shared. Van der Kool calls it working with our emotional brain. Uh, I name it emotional healing. When we are connected to our feelings, to our true emotions, we can heal our feelings, we can heal our pain, we can identify our emotions and name them. As we share our emotions with other people, with a professional person, psychologist, a mentor, a life coach, or even with our best friend or a parent, who can actually relate to our pain and understand us, it can be extremely helpful in the way of dealing or coping with the trauma. Although this method is the most effective and the best out of all method, it does not mean that it will work right away. It does not mean that if you go to a therapist and share your childhood abuse, you will feel better right away. The healing process takes time. The healing speed will depend on the intensity of your trauma and how long, how many days, months, years you were traumatized. In the book, the author uh, also talks about an experiment that was performed in the United States about 34 years ago. And this experiment was performed on dogs. Dogs were locked in cages and were given electroshocks. At first, the dogs were trying to escape. Because there was no way out, they eventually gave up trying. At a certain point, scientists opened the cages and continued giving them the electroshock. The surprising fact was that the dogs 
were no longer even trying to escape. The conclusion of this experiment is when a person is deeply traumatized or has been living with a specific amount of time with an abuser for several months or years, at some point their psyche will give up. This explains why people who were abused in childhood end up in toxic relationship in their adulthood. This explains why women spend years in abusive relationships. Towards the end of the experiment, the scientists were trying to find out how to get the dogs to leave their open cages, how to teach them, how basically how to heal the uh, emotional and physical abuse. Uh, in order to do that, they had literally drag them out of their cages again and again and again. Only after multiple repetition, the dogs were finally able to leave the cages on their own. After multiple repetition, the dogs were able to see the exit and to believe that they can escape. Uh, that's why when people come to therapy and take only one, two or three sessions, uh, they might say that therapy does not work. Uh, unfortunately, the deeper the trauma, the longer we need, to, the more time we need to heal it. That's why we need multiple sessions. That's why we need to work on your trauma, on your uh, childhood abuse, or maybe on your parents' divorce, not one, not twice, not even three times. We need to do multiple repetitions. We need to use different exercises. We need to work with your body, mind, and spirit, your soul, your emotions, uh, your self-awareness, your mind, right? Your body, right? like uh, with the breathing exercises. We need to use multiple methods in order to break out our limiting beliefs, in order to change our behavior pattern, in order to find an exit and heal our trauma and heal our pain. And you can go to the best therapist in town, but still one session is not going to be enough. Some of you who have already tried my free guided meditation videos know that I recommend repeating them for at least 21 consecutive days. If you do it once or twice, it won't work or the result uh, will fade quickly. So in order for our brain uh, to change our limiting beliefs, to find the new behavior, to start working um, on our self-esteem, we need at least 21 consecutive days. And if you're interested in uh, my free guided meditations, I will leave the playlist um, to all my meditations below in the description of this video. And I'm not asking you to trust my words. I'm asking you to try it yourself. Uh, choose any meditation that you like and do it for at least 21 days and then please share your truthful experience and um, thoughts about uh, this healing process in the comment section on the youtube i will be happy to see your comments i will be happy to guide you and i will be happy to see your results to summarize the first and the most effective method how we copy and deal with the trauma is through emotional support. Unfortunately, this method is not always available for us. If we don't have emotional support, if our friends and family cannot relate and understand what we are going through, if we have no one to talk to, then our psyche will look for another solution. Another much simpler mechanism of dealing with trauma is based on our physical body. We have already discussed the idea of emotional healing. So this second uh, defense mechanism is something that I call coping on a physical level. Uh, you've probably heard about fight or flight reactions in animals, human included. People always choose one or the other when we face any stressful scenario in life. Example, 
A woman who lives with an abusive husband can either run away and close herself in the bathroom, in the bedroom, every time when her husband wants to hit her or when wants to abuse her. So this is flight reaction. She's flying away. She's running away from the situation. She's not solving the situation. She's just hiding from it in the bathroom, in the closet, in the bedroom. Uh, fight reaction would be if this woman fight with her husband when he's trying to abuse her instead of leaving him he will try to fight him back and um, you've probably heard or maybe you've experienced it yourself uh, conscious conflict arguments screams scandals and even physical abuse in family which can um, uh, which can uh, ex which can be in a family for years. So women can spend years with a toxic husband, toxic abusive husband who hits them, but they never leave. That's why. Because they just fight he, uh, their husbands or they run away and hide in the closet or their parents' house, but then they come back. These women, they don't seek professional help. They don't believe that somebody can actually help them. Or they might feel shame of their situation. Uh, so they don't even share what is happening with them anymore. They suppress their emotions and hide them inside. Yes, this is the way how they're coping with their trauma but they are not healing it they are just suppressing it more and more inside of themselves another example of this second coping mechanism are uh, people with the ptsd such as war veterans who do not talk about their feelings but rather go to a bar where they can get drunk and violent they are showing their feelings through fight response. They're fighting. They're fighting other people in the bar. They're fighting the bartender. They're showing their anger and violence because this is the way how they try to also to suppress or to release their pain. They're expressing their rage by hitting other people, by breaking things around them. They're destroying themselves and they're destroying others. Let's summarize again. The most effective and the healthiest way of dealing with trauma is emotional support, emotional method. Uh, when you are talking to a therapist, to a mentor, or to a family member, or to a close friend who can actually relate to your feelings and emotions. The second, uh, more primitive way of dealing with traumatic event is coping on a physical level. Fight or flight respond. Run from the attacker and hide or fight the attacker. In this case, uh, we choose physical actions instead. We are not healing our trauma. We are just, we are just trying to survive through the stressful event and we can stuck in those stressful event for years and the third and the most complex coping mechanism is freezing or to giving up people are blocking not only their emotions but their physical pain as well they are blocking all the feelings inside of their physical body if you think again about the experiment with dogs they were lying still in the open cages and did not even try to escape from the electroshock. Their body kind of adjusted to the electroshock, but it's not really an adjusted mechani mechanism. Their body used to pain. They are ignoring pain. They are blocking the pain so they don't feel it. The pain is so big that our brain is blocking the sensation of pain so we don't feel it examples from our real life a child who is silently waiting in a room night after night for an abuser who come and rape her a woman who is allowing her husband to hit her again and again and who does not talk about it who does not leave it who, she's not fighting she's not running away she's just allowing him to hit her 
Uh, third example, a war veteran who can spend hours lying in bed without saying a word. They just block in their feelings, they're blocking their body, they just they just existing in this world without feeling anything physically or emotionally. Fourth example, a victim of sexual abuse who cannot say a word about what happened. They don't even remember. They can say that they were in their room trying to go to bed and then they can remember themselves in a hospital uh, all in blood and they don't remember what had happened. Uh, so they again they are blocking their feelings on their physical body they are blocking their memory emotions feelings and physical sensations this is called freeze reaction or giving up mode in this freeze mode a person is blocking the pain so they can survive they are giving up their body to the abuser. They are not trying to escape. They are not trying to fight back. They might not even remember what has happened to them. In the book, The Body Keeps the Score, the author says uh, that our right hemisphere develops first. And uh, the brain, the right hemisphere is responsible for images, for our feelings, for our emotions. The left brain or the left hemisphere is responsible for logic, for the ability to name our emotions, for the ability to analyze the situation. In the case of deep trauma, such as PTSD or sexual abuse, our left brain is getting blocked. When people are trying to recall traumatic event, everything feels exactly as it was when the event had happened, even if it was 10 years ago. So their right hemisphere is working. They can remember images, they can remember feelings, they can remember emotions, but they are as strong as they were 10 years ago. And some people cannot remember anything at all. So even the bright hemisphere is blocked. They don't even remember those images, even if the event was vivid, and very, very emotionally charged. If you think about the child development, our left hemisphere is becoming active when a child is learning how to speak. Uh, before that time, the child is crying. Uh, a child cannot really understand cause and effect. Only uh, when a child is about two, three years old, he's learning to speak, he's learning how to explain himself, how to communicate. This is the time when our left hemisphere is becoming active. The child is learning how to process and analyze the situation, how to understand the cause and the fact at the age of six, seven, eight, nine, sometimes 10 years old. Some people cannot remember their childhood and because of that, they cannot understand why they end up in toxic relationship in, in adulthood. Uh, some information is blocked from them. The good news that often we don't need to remember negative event. We don't need to remember the trauma. The beauty of therapy is that our trauma can be healed using our right brain. Uh, one of the methods that I like to use uh, is art therapy. Another method is movie therapy. Uh, third method is initiation therapy or guided meditation. All of this method uh, are working with our right hemisphere. So we are creating new images. We are creating new experience. We are working with uh, visualization and symbols and archetypes. We are creating new experiences and we're discussing these new experiences during therapy. So we are connecting our right hemisphere with the left hemisphere. We are creating those new bridges between our new experiences and our logic. And when we connect to our physical body, we can see the healing process.
The goal and the beauty of therapy is that we can talk about our feelings and emotions in a safe environment. We are rewriting our own history often without going back to our childhood and without experiencing the pain. We are creating a story with a new happy ending. I've seen many times how people have changed their lives for better. I've seen how they heal from toxic abusive relationships, how they become successful and how they improve their boundaries with other people. I would like to invite you on this wonderful self-development and self-discovery journey. I encourage you to check out my online courses and my free guided meditations. You can start today. There is nothing to lose. My guided meditations are free. I have more than 10 free self-development webinars on YouTube. You can start right now, right here. And most of my guided meditations will only take 15 minutes of your time a day. When you're ready to go deeper, I will be happy to see you on my online courses and private sessions. I also offer drawing marathons where we work with symbols. We use uh, different coloring tools and draw a picture, creating a new experience, uh, bringing new emotions and new feelings. This is an incredible method for working with your self-esteem to heal your inner child and even to work with your limiting beliefs regarding money. All the links you can find in the description of this video. Uh, I'm sure you have some questions and maybe concerns. Your opinion matters. Please write your questions in the comment section. If you don't write your questions, I'm not able to help you. Let's help each other. Please share this video with your friends. Share it on your Facebook, social media, Instagram, Twitter, via email. If you find this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel by clicking the notification bell. Uh, your opinion matters and I'm looking forward to seeing your comments, seeing your likes and seeing your questions. If you have a private question, you can submit it on my website, lenasemenek.com. Again, my name is Lena Semenek and this is Psychology of Happiness, where happiness is the purpose of life. Until next time, bye.